they enter into the town and go up to the temple. And after worshipping the Lord, Jesus goes back to the court where the rabbis teach. People crowd round him and a mother who has come from Sintium shows him her little boy whom a disease, I think, has made blind. His eyes are white, as if he had a large cataract over his pupil or a leucoma. Jesus cures him, touching his eyes lightly with his fingers. And he immediately begins to speak. A man bought a piece of ground and planted a vineyard in it. He built a house for the husbandman, a tower for the caretakers, wine cellars and places where to press the grapes. And he leased it to tenants whom he trusted. Then he went abroad. When the time came that the vineyard could bear fruit, as the vines had grown to the extent of being fruit bearing, the owner of the vineyard sent his servants to the tenants to collect the profit of the harvest. But the tenants surrounded the servants and they beat some. They stoned some with heavy stones, wounding them seriously. And they killed some of them. Those who had survived and had gone back to the landowner told him what had happened to them. The owner cured and comforted them and sent more servants, this time a larger number. And the tenants dealt with them as they had done with the previous ones. Then the owner of the vineyard said, I will send my son to them. They will certainly respect my heir. But the tenants, when they saw him come and they realised that he was the heir, said to one another, Come, let us gather together in a large number. Let us take him out to a remote place and kill him. His inheritance will be left to us. And receiving him with hypocritical honours, they gathered round him as if they wished to give him a hearty welcome. Then, after kissing him, they tied him. They gave him a good thrashing and with endless mocking words, they took him to the place of torture and killed him. Now tell me, that father and owner, who one day will realise that his son and heir to his property is not coming back, and he finds out that his servant tenants, to whom he had given his land to cultivate in his name, enjoying a fair share of it, and giving what was fair to their master, are the murderers of his son. What will he do? And Jesus' sapphire eyes, as bright as if they were lit by the sun, flash on the people present, and particularly on the groups of the more influential Judeans, Pharisees and scribes scattered among the crowd. No one speaks. So speak up, at least you, rabbis of Israel. Speak the word of justice to convince the people to be just. I might speak a word that is not good according to your minds. So I ask you to speak so that the people may not be led into error. The scribes are compelled to reply and they say, He will punish the wicked men with a cruel death and will give the vineyard to other tenants so that they may cultivate it in an honest manner, giving him the fruit of the land entrusted to them. What you said is correct. In the scriptures it is written, the stone rejected by the builders has become the keystone. This is the work of the Lord. And it is wonderful to see. Therefore, as it is written thus, and you know, and you rightly judge, that those tenants who killed the son and heir of the owner of the vineyard should be punished in a cruel manner, and the vineyard should be given to other tenants. 
to be cultivated in an honest way? Well, that is why I say to you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and will be given to people to make it yield fruit. And he who falls against this stone will break in pieces. And he upon whom the stone falls will be crushed. The chief priests, the Pharisees and scribes, with a really heroic attitude, do not react. So powerful is the eagerness to reach one's aim. On past occasions, they at least opposed him, whereas today, when the Lord Jesus openly tells them that their power will be taken away from them, they do not abuse him. They do not react violently against him. They do not threaten him, behaving like false, patient lambs that under the hypocritical appearance of meekness conceal the unchangeable hearts of wolves. <laughs>